don't draw anime in art class. Have you ever heard this? Have you ever felt like this? Well, you're definitely not alone, my friend. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to The Art Mentor. My name is Sean, and as a huge anime fan turned art teacher, I have some unique and very accurate information to tell you about why art teachers can hate anime that no other video on this topic can, and it's gonna start right now. So the first reason why your art teacher may not like anime is because they may not have been exposed to it very much. It's still not that widespread to people that are very classically trained. And this just does not usually fit into that bubble. They'll be exposed to things like comics and stuff, but when you get into anime and manga, they just have no idea what it is. And thus it produces the effect of fear of the unknown and therefore they reject it. Now, yes, this does happen a lot. And another reason why this tends to happen is because of this. Your art teacher might not have any type of experience or knowledge as far as how do you instruct somebody who's very interested in anime or manga. They don't know the rules for it, and they don't understand the main concepts, the theories that go into it, and therefore it makes it very difficult for them to give really high quality instruction and to really bring out the fullest potential in an anime or a mangaka styled artist. Myself personally, I love anime and whenever I get a student that sees that, I'm always very excited about it. Art teachers that have a lot of knowledge and expertise in this field, in both anime or manga, they are few and far between in our field, which is unfortunate. What do you think about that? Have you ever experienced this? Let me know. Now, before we continue, I do want to let you know that it is not always your art teacher's fault, and that's what we have to talk about now. So let's have some hard conversations about these topics. A lot of young artists are looking for finding their style, and this then develops a premature fixation on stylization, and this is a really big concern because what a lot of artists are doing is they're trying to find their style instead of just developing themselves, and it becomes an excuse and an omission from their overall growth and development. So take me as an example on this, and I'm gonna bite the bullet on this one. When I was in high school, I only wanted to do anime and I only wanted to do manga. And literally every single time I was taught a skill or technique, I would constantly be thinking to myself, hmm, how do I make that anime or manga? And I would literally sit there and be like, hmm, how does one make a chair anime? Have you ever thought this? Let me know about it, please. Let, reassure me, please, that I'm not the only person on earth that does this. This then creates this funnel system into like you thinking that you can't only do things if they are presented in an anime or manga style. Now, this is definitely something that I've seen happen in my classroom, not only with anime, but other things too. I've had students to be like, well, I'm not gonna need this for animation. I'm not gonna need to know this for 3D. I'm like, yeah, bro, you do. <laughs> it's all the same, it's all interrelated. And now what all of this together can create is this. You can develop a limited belief system based on what you believe you can or you cannot do because of your fixation on anime or manga. What this essentially means is that some artists will start to go ahead and make up excuses for generally what is just a lack of effort for trying something that's not anime or manga. And then they'll tell themselves, well, I can or I cannot do this because of how anime it is or it is not. So for example, people that try and do hyper-realism, okay, what are they gonna do? They're gonna give a big fat black outline to everything that they're drawing here. Or for example, if you're trying to learn perspective, they're gonna be gauging that and saying like, hmm, well, I could probably use that in my background, so I will learn that, versus this realism nonsense, no, 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 no. If this sounds like you, and if you're rejecting it, then this is what's going to happen next. This will create entry barriers, meaning that you will then approach your art courses and your art teachers with an I can't attitude. And I just wanna let you know this, my friends, whether or not you are an adult or you are a teenager who's trying to learn how to be a better artist, you need to hear this. Anytime that you say I can't in your artistic journey is you directly giving up on your potential. The number one example I can give you for this is anything to do with realism. The stylization of how cel-shaded anime happens is directly based on realism, y'all. And when you look at modern anime, you're gonna notice that it is really deathly accurate to exactly what it would look like if this was a real thing or a real person or a real object in real life. Tell me if you feel this way too, but anime in general is just hands down so much better. The folding, the lighting, the scenery, the composition, all of that stuff is so much more sophisticated than American cartoons. If you feel this way too, let me know about it. Tell me I'm not wrong. Now here's another common concern I see with students that overfixate on anime styles. Your color recognition can be very heavily skewed to almost like a type of color blindness. And this is generally because the heavy use of really saturated colors in a lot of anime were great on screen 
but they don't translate well to anything else. And this is really difficult whenever they're trying to be taught how to do something that is oppositional to what they're very comfortable viewing on an almost daily or daily basis. Have you ever had this issue too? Like maybe you're trying to paint a landscape and all of a sudden everything just looks like massively garish because boom, everything is just really bright, vibrant colors. Now, when you do take a look at a lot of modern anime and especially like manga illustrations, they're not using all saturated colors for most of the time. They're using, and they're now transitioning towards a lot of more muted colors and different color palettes that are really necessary for people to know and learn about. And if you are an anime artist, if you're an aspiring anime or manga artist, then you should definitely learn full on color theory so that you can produce really awesome and avant-garde stuff like this. Now this also leads me into my next concern. This could also result in some very harsh fundamental flaws. And what I mean by that is just a straight up rejection of the elements and principles of design. It is very difficult. And I've seen this so many times in my classes I've taught. Sometimes anime artists become completely uninterested in the laws and rules that are very subtly integrated into anime, but they're just not aware of yet because they haven't been taught it. Things like the rule of thirds, composition, color theory, perspective. All of these are really essential elements of all art, not just anime. And if you broaden your mind into accepting everything, then you can think about how you can then apply that to everything. Now, we can't talk about the elements and principles of art and anime without discussing this concern too. This can also result in a disproportionate concern over making things look cute instead of accurate. The most common concern that I'm gonna note this on is for humans and bodies. So a lot of anime style artists, they're really uncomfortable with producing like portraiture, for example, and especially self portraiture where everything is not perfect and attractive and aesthetic. And my friends, I just want to let you know this, but a lot of modern anime is trained towards more complex styles and they're definitely trending towards a lot of styles that are far more detailed. And if you reject how people look and how bodies look, let's talk about bodies too. The average character inside of an anime is definitely not the correct proportion to a human figure. And again, this skews it. It doesn't matter if they're trying to draw it, if they're trying to paint it digitally, if they're trying to sculpt it, whatever it is, whatever media they're using, this is a very common flaw. The other most common issue, aside from making humans, is producing animals. Because again, a lot of anime artists try and make everything look cute and adorable, which unfortunately has the unintended effect of making a lot of things look like furry art. And that's just not a comfortable label for most people. And if you've never thought about this, yeah, let me know about that if that's been your concern down below. Now, all of this wraps up nicely into this big issue. You are pigeonholing yourself into thinking that you can only do anime. This makes it very difficult for you to evolve your skills. And my friends, I just wanna let you know this, by the time that you master what you're trying to create, it will be obsolete in the field. What you should be doing, and as my advice, as both an artist and as an art teacher, is you should be learning and accruing a massive set of skills in every type of media so that you can then apply that and yes, bring out your own original style in your artwork. Even if you stick with anime, you're gonna bring your own original style and flair into it. And that's what's gonna set you apart. This is what will bring you notoriety and this will overall allow you to achieve a very high level of success instead of just falling into the crowd, which there's a huge sea of people just doing the same thing all the time, unfortunately. And when you look at artists that do stand out, they are really integrating all of the fundamental philosophies of great art into their art and that's what makes them so innovative so my friends don't ever think that what you're pursuing right now is definitely your end-all be-all you should be open to exposure and that is overall going to give you a lot of really interesting skills that you can then integrate into what you love and know how to do and if you want to learn how to be a better artist get art commissions and more make sure you watch these videos right here